Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Fei Yang. I'm a PhD student in CPAS Virginia Tech. My topic is couple inductors with an adaptive coupling coefficient for multiphase voltage regulators. Here shows the VR design challenges for microprocessor applications. So the required current for the CPU and GPU are increased dramatically over the year. So the multiphase VR design is necessary to meet such high power demand and low training requirements. And for the VR design, the native coupling, uh, native coupling inductor I was introduced to improve the circuit performance. So here shows a two-phase coupling inductor. The coupling is um, built by the flask interaction between the two phases. And here shows in that curve waveform of this coupling inductor. It can be seen that there are several different equivalent inductance in one switching cycle due to the coupling. So this coupling inductor has a nonlinear inductance property. And uh, for the static current ripple, we found out that this LQ1 will determine this current amplitude. Therefore, this LQ1 is defined as a static inductance. And for the transient performance, uh, we found that this LQ2 will determine the current slow rate during the low trend. Therefore, this LQ2 is defined as a trend inductance. And for the, this two-phase network coupling inductor, we can achieve such that the static inductance is larger than the trend inductance. Therefore, a small current ripple uh, value and a large fast trend speed can be achieved at the same time by using a coupling inductor. And for the multi-phase coupling inductor structure, there are two different methods to achieve it. The first one is using this multi-core-like structure. And uh, uh, however, there is an asymmetric coupling issue when the phase number is larger than two. And also the core structure is quite complex. Another method is using this indirect coupling that structure. So uh, we, have a we have a single core for each phase in that here, And we have an additional winding loop to form the coupling. And the core structure of uh, this indirect coupling data is quite simple and it's very scalable. And also, you can achieve symmetric coupling. So, this presentation will be more analysis on this structure. And you have a detailed look of this indirect coupling data. So, for each phase in data, you have two windings one is inductor winding, another one is couple winding. And we name the inductance of this uh, as uh, of each phase in data as LNC. And we have another inductor in this couple winding loop, which we name as LC. And we found that uh, the coupling coefficient will be impacted by this LC for this indirect coupling inductor. Therefore, uh, we can achieve the required coupling coefficient by adjusting LC. And then we can design the static inductance and training data value based on the coupling coefficient and the LNC. So for this indirect coupling inductor, we can achieve desired coupling coefficient by adjusting the inductance of the LC. And here shows how the static inductance and training inductance change with coupling coefficient for indirect coupling inductor. It can be seen that both inductance are reduced with larger coupling coefficient. Therefore, usually the coupling coefficient is designed in this area such that we can achieve a large static inductance and a small trend inductance. Then we are thinking, can we further reduce the trend inductance without reducing the static inductance? And our idea is that we can use in a coupling coefficient, variable coupling coefficient. And this can be achieved by using a variable inductance from LC. So here shows how it works. Uh, here's a low current profile. And uh, first, the circuit will work it in the steady state operation. Then there's low trend. Uh, after low trend, the circuit will come back to the steady state operation again. And this blue waveform is a uh, total inductor current. So during the time T0 to T1, the circuit is working in the steady state operation. So we design this LC inductance uh, has a large inductance. So this gave us a large static inductance value. And then 
during the T1 and T2 period, the low trend happens. So we will drop this uh, LC nothing to a much smaller value. And this will give you give us a much smaller trend inductance as shown here to achieve a better uh, trend performance. Then after T2, the circuit will come back to the statistic operation again, and we will increase this LC inductance to a large value again. So in this way, we can achieve a large static inductance in the static operation while achieving a much smaller trend inductance during low trends by using a variable coupling coefficient concept. Then the question is how to achieve such uh, inductance profile for LC such that uh, the inductance will change with the circuit operation. And we found that we can use this current flowing through LC uh, to control this in, in, this variable inductance. For this ALC current, we found that you will have a large amplitude during low trend. And this can be ex explained by this equation where the low, this ALC current will follow the total that current change. Therefore, during low trend, we can use this large LC current to saturate the core and to achieve a small LC inductance. So the key point of this is that we can use in this variable coupling coefficient method to further reduce the trend inductance without reducing the static inductance. And here is our preferred inductance profile for this variable LC. So we want the large inductance when this LC current is small and it drops to a much smaller value when LC current increase. And then we can use this uh, step gap core structure to achieve this. And uh, so we have a step core in the middle leg. And when this LC current is small, and so this small core is now saturated, the inductance is controlled by this air gap LG1. And when the LC current increase, the small core will saturate first, and the air and the, the whole inductance of this structure will be controlled by the air gap LG2. So uh, by using this structure, we can control the uh, the air gap to achieve the required inductance profile for this variable LC. And here is a hardware platform that we build to verify the concept. So we build a four-phase indirect couple inductor based on evaluation board from TI. Here is a four-phase inductors, and this is a variable LC inductor. And here is a measured inductance of this variable LC compared with the uh, design value, it can be seen that they match very well. And uh, here is the measured uh, statistic current ripple of the, of the proposed method by using the variable LC. It can be seen that we can achieve the same statistic current ripple as compared with the constant LC case. And here's a tested low trend performance uh, with the same op capacitor value by using this variable LC, uh, we can achieve around 20, 26% overshoot reduction, overshoot reduction as compared with the constant LC case. And uh, as for the op capacitor reduction, so uh, we keep the wallet spec uh, requirement the same for both case. And uh, for the web, by using this variable LC, we can reduce the op capacitance from 4.5 millifarad to 3.5 millifarad, and it's equal to 22% of cap reduction by using the proposed method. So in summary, the trend performance of multi-phase VR can be improved a lot by using an indirect coupling that structure. And this presentation proposed an indirect coupling that structure with an adaptive coupling coefficient and trend inductance. And by using this, we can further reduce, uh, improve the trend performance uh, for this indirect coupling that structure. Compared with indirect coupling that with a constant coupling, coupling coefficient, we can achieve 26% overshoot reduction uh, by using the same off capacitance value. And if we keep the trend performance the same, we can achieve 22% off cap reduction by using the proposed method. And that's all. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the conference.
Lastly, is the reference that are listed in this presentation.